What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Journey into Nyx. Uh, gotta be honest, this is very thematic because of obviously the return to Theros, which is great. Uh, and honestly the set as a whole in its inception was a really cool set. Like the whole Greek mythology idea was really, really fun. That being said, the standard environment tended to be very unhealthy. Uh, we had a lot of standard devotion decks which basically ran the format. Uh, not that Devotion is a bad mechanic, it just was very overpowering at the time. Uh, we did also have in uh, the original Theros time, we had things like Esper Control taking over, but uh, hopefully this upcoming standard environment will be a little bit healthier, but regardless, uh, I am excited to open up this pack. Uh, I actually do like the set Journey into Nyx. A lot of really cool cards in it, uh, including some multicolored gods. Uh, which I absolutely love. So uh, as such, we're going to go through this as if it's a pack one, pick one scenario. We're going to hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be, and we'll get to talk about the mechanics and things along the way. So very excited. Our first card here, uh, Seder Hoplite, uh, one red for a 1-1 one -one with Heroic. Uh, so Heroic was a very unique mechanic during this set. So essentially it got a buff any time that it was targeted by a spell. Uh, so whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put a 1-1 counter on Seder Hoplite. So uh, what was really cool about this is it enabled a card like Seder Hoplite, which is an okay turn one play. It's not amazing, but it's fine. Uh, it enabled it to have a little bit more long-term game with things like enchant creatures or bestow mechanics, things like that. Uh, and that was really, really fun. It also, any combat trick left a counter behind, which was really cool as well. So... Uh, as a 1-1 one -one creature, I think this is okay. Uh, it's a very aggressive card. It's going to hopefully be able to get in for some damage, and because of that heroic, stay a little bit more relevant throughout the game. That being said, it's not a very exciting first pick. It's not bad, uh, but it's just not very exciting. Um, I'm really hoping to get a bigger powerhouse card or something like that as my first pick. Uh, Laguna Band Trailblazer, hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 0-4 for 1 white, uh, also features Heroic, so whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put a 1-1 one -one counter on the Trailblazer, exactly the same as the Hoplite. Um, I don't love this card, uh, to be honest. I think I'd rather have the Hoplite, uh, because it's a little bit more aggressive just on the face of it. Uh, this is a very good stall card, but I tend not to like stall cards very much, to be brutally honest. So, uh, honestly, I think out of these two, I would rather have the Hoplite over the Trailblazer. Uh, Oak Heart Dryads is a 2-3 uh, for 2 and a green. It is an enchantment creature, worth noting. Uh, and it features Constellation, so whenever it uh, or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Uh, the Constellation mechanic was really sweet. Uh, because you had such a huge wealth of these enchantment creatures, as well as just a lot of like enchant re enchantment removal, things like that, um, it was really, really easy to trigger Constellation, which means you could very reliably, I would say, uh, be able to pump up your guys in this case, or, you know, whatever that constellation uh, mechanic on that particular card would do, you could pretty regularly trigger it. Uh, so I actually really like this card. I think of these uh, three, it's probably the pick I would take. Uh, yes, those, those plus one, plus one boosts don't stick around, like with the heroic mechanic, uh, but the downside to something like heroic is that if you invest quite a lot into one particular card, it's very easy to get blown out. Uh, I, I say that with enchant creatures a lot, but it's very similar with heroic. Now heroic's a little bit better because it is kind of just buffing off of things like combat tricks and stuff like that as well. Uh, but I would rather have something that gives my deck as a whole a little bit more synergy than just particularly one card. Uh, Font of Return is an enchantment for one and a black. Uh, you can pay three and a black and sacrifice it. Return up to three target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, any kind of effect like this that's going to give you a little bit of recursion has some value in Limited solely because if you're bringing back big bombs or you're bringing back something that your opponent already had to deal with, 
you're gaining extra value, and that's worth noting. Uh, this one, definitely not a first pick by any means. It's a lot of mana investment. You're, you are having to literally pay six mana to make this happen, uh, and that's a lot. But it is three creature cards, which is also a lot, so you do have to kind of weigh that. Uh, the good thing about it, it's an enchantment, uh, and it counts for devotion. Uh, and so there are going to be situations where because you've got black mana symbols on this, it actually has a little bit more worth than it normally would. Uh, there is a cycle of these fonts, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one's not my favorite, but it's not a bad one. And, well, there you go. Uh, fonts of Fortunes. Enchantment for one and a blue. You can pay one a blue, one and a blue, excuse me. Sacrifice it and draw two cards. Uh, exact same thing here. Uh, it's a perfectly fine card, but it's not a super exciting card. You're investing quite a lot of mana. Uh, the reason you're investing a lot of mana for this is solely because you can get those extra devotion or those extra enchantment triggers off of Constellation or something along those lines, which makes it a little more worth it in this set. Uh, that being said, I still like Okar Dryads, I think, a little bit better. It encourages a little bit more aggression and just has a lot of synergy with the rest of the set. Uh, Flame Speaker's Will uh, is an enchant creature for one red. Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and whenever the creature deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice the will. Uh, if you do, destroy target artifact. Um, if that was target enchantment, this card would be much better. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. It's not that amazing. Uh, there are going to be artifacts that you might want to hit, so maybe worth sideboarding in at some point, uh, especially in like a heroic deck where you can really get a lot of extra value off of it. Uh, but in general, not a super exciting card. Definitely not one that I'm looking to pick here. Uh, Cast Into Darkness is another enchant creature for one and a black. The enchanted creature gets minus two, minus zero, and cannot block. Um, not a super exciting card. This is obvious, some, obviously something you're going to peg on your opponent's creature, not your own. I think that goes without saying, but just to be clear. Um, the fact that it can't block is almost more relevant than the negative two, negative zero. Uh, you're not going to kill the creature, obviously, but the fact that it can't block just allows you to get into a lot more combat steps with your own creatures, which is great. Uh, I like that in a very aggressive uh, kind of black-red style deck, maybe, where you're really trying to push through a lot of damage very quickly. Uh, the problem, I would say, is that I generally find that deck to be the red-white deck in this, in this set. Excuse me. Uh, that tends to be where the heroic mechanic is, which is really the place that you want to be for that kind of aggressive deck. I, I just don't love this card. I honestly just don't think it's that great. I think there are going to be instances where you might want to tag something with it, but there are probably a lot of other cards that I'd rather have in my deck than this one. Uh, Araskus Swift Claw. I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a 3-1 vanilla creature, 4-1, and a white. Uh, we've seen this card reprinted a few times since uh, this set, actually, and it's fine. I, I have a hard time really liking cards that have very varied, uh, very varied, that's funny, uh, toughness to power ratios. So in this case, it's very high power, very low toughness uh, for two mana. Uh, you're kind of getting that like 2-2, two, two, but like total of four stats. Uh, but kind of spread in an awkward way. And the problem that this has is it's going to trade down a lot of the time. Yes, it can trade up. For instance, it can trade for something like Oak Heart Dryads, which is great, but because it doesn't have any kind of ability or anything like that, it tends to be just a blocker more than a, uh, a very aggressive card. Now, that's not always the case. Obviously, this card is trying to be aggressive, wants to be swinging in, but the problem is if they have any creature on the field, it can kill it. So that's kind of the, the tough part with this. Any creature with uh, power, I should say. Uh, we did see a 0-4 early in the back, but generally speaking, not a super exciting card. Definitely not the card I'd pick here. Uh, Triton Shore Stalker, excuse me, is a 1-1 for one blue and it can't be blocked. Pretty straightforward card. Uh, not a bad one though. The fact that it can't be blocked is kind of nice. Uh, it just means that they're going to have to deal with it outside of combat. So you can peg this with stuff like enchant creatures, which they're going to be a lot of in an enchantment themed set. Um, and then hopefully be able to just swing in for a lot of damage over the course of the game. Now, if they have a removal spell, this is like target number one, uh, which is kind of why I don't like taking it here. Uh, it is very good because it is evasive, but I think it's just going to get killed like right off the bat because they're going to try and kill it right away. They don't want to be taking damage every single turn. So uh, I don't love this card uh, as much as the Dryads. Honestly, this pack so far, meh, not been too good. But uh, I do think still the Dryads is probably the best pick. Uh, Ravenous Lucrocata, maybe. 
that might be it, uh, is a 2-4 for 3 and a green. Uh, it has Vigilance, and it features Monstrosity 3, so you can pay 6 and a green if this creature is not already monstrous. You put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and it becomes monstrous. Uh, monstrosity was a really cool mechanic on a lot of creatures. The downside I found to uh, a lot of the creatures with it, though, it's very expensive. It's a lot of mana to actually sink into a card to hopefully get it to the point where it can deal a lot of damage. What I would like to have is a card that's like pretty good no matter what, uh, and then monstrosity putting that monstrosity counter stuff on it just makes it that much better. Uh, this card, unfortunately, on its own is not that great. It's a 2-4 with Vigilance, which is fine. That's going to be able to block and hopefully deal some damage too. It's probably not going to be able to swing in that often though because it's going to get outpowered. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it is only 4 mana for that 2-4 with Vigilance. But again, the power is not there. It's not going to be dealing enough damage. You can invest seven mana into it to monstrosity this, uh, but that's a lot of mana. And then as soon as you do that, the, the, the worry becomes you invested seven mana on top of the four you already invested to play this. Is it worth it? Because they could just kill spell it. And then you wasted a ton of mana on a particular, uh, on one particular card. It's very similar to Heroic where you can really over invest and then get kind of shot down for it. It's a very high risk, high reward strategy. Some people like it, some people don't. I tend not to be on the, on the camp of I want to go for a card like this. There are some monstrosity cards I would take. This is not necessarily one of them. Uh, our first uncommon here is Chariot of Victory. It is an equipment for three mana. Uh, the equipped creature has First Strike, Trample, and Haste, and the equip cost is only one. Uh, the fact that it's only one on the equip cost, pretty sweet. Uh, it's also a very nice first round pick solely because it leaves you open. You're not necessarily stuck into a particular color, and every time you target it, you can trigger things like Heroic, for instance. Uh, so there's a lot of really good upside to a card like this. I never really take equipment super early uh, Unless they're particularly very very good. I think this one is worth it. I think it's better than the dryads uh, It just has so much synergy with a lot of the heroic spells uh, It is an artifact not an enchantment. So you're not going to be triggering things like constellation There's no devotion with it or anything like that, but it's pretty good I mean three mana you're getting first strike trample and haste That just means you can punch through damage if you really need to you're probably going to win combat in a lot of cases, and the creature you tag it with is going to be able to swing in immediately. So all very, very positive things. And with an equip cost of one, just move it back and forth and trigger heroic as much as you can. Like, I'm in. So I actually really like this card. I think this is definitely the pick so far. Uh, Leonin Iconoclast. These, these names are great. Uh, it's a 3-2 for three and a white. It does have Heroic as well, so whenever you cast a spell that targets it, destroy target enchantment creature and opponent controls. That's a very good card as well. Uh, so obviously I would want these cards in the same deck, which is a bit annoying. Uh, you're probably not going to wheel either one of these, if I had to guess. Heroic is a really strong mechanic. Chariot of Victory very much enables Heroic, though. And enchantment creatures are very relevant, obviously. There's a lot of them throughout this, uh, this pack, but also just the set in general. I think I'm going to keep these together for now. We're, we're, we'll uh, hopefully be able to decide later in the in the pack. Uh, last uncommon, Blinding Flare is one red for a sorcery. It has Strive, so it costs one red more to cast for each target beyond the first. Any number of target creatures can't block this turn. Uh, so this is very similar to the enchant creature, the black enchant creature we saw earlier. Uh, this one is, I think, a little bit better uh, because... Um, you can target multiple things with it. You can do it in one turn and hopefully be able to kind of swing in for the win like right away. Uh, so there's a lot of upside to this one, I think, above the enchant creature. Definitely like some of the other picks we've got already more than this, but I do think in the right go-wide deck, this is great. This is exactly the kind of card that you want to finish off the game. And our rare, well, <laughs> uh, Iroas, God of Victory. It is a 7-4 for two, a red, and a white indestructible leg legendary enchantment creature god uh this is one of the multicolor gods that i was talking about so as long as your devotion to red and white is less than seven iroas isn't a creature so devotion if you don't know what that means is the number of uh the number of mana pips that you see on your side of the field so for instance on this card we have a oops, excuse me a red mana and a white mana pip uh so that does uh take down this number by two so you need five more devotion, if that makes sense. Uh, creatures you control can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. 
and prevent all damage that would be dealt to target attacking creatures you control. What this means is you're going to be swinging in a lot, all the time, because you, you just, you have to. This is the way you win. This is a great card. So I got to be honest, this is a very obvious first pick. Uh, we do not have any foils or anything like that. So got a victory. Here we come. This is definitely the pick in my opinion. Hopefully you guys agree, but if you don't, feel free to let me know in the comment section. If you have any other insight or anything else that you want to share about Journey into Nyx, please feel free to share it in the comment section below. We're happy to talk about that and love to have that conversation. So uh, with that, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack Pack video.